J-Bone here, and there are so many reasons why you need to be following Formula One right now that I had to make this full video about it so that I could properly explain all of them. First and foremost, you need to be following Formula One right now because no longer can F1 races be called boring. To clarify, I personally never think F1 races are boring because there are always amazing and highly entertaining storylines to follow, but it is no secret that a lot of people do think that F1 races have been quite boring these past two seasons due to Max Verstappen winning pretty much every single one of them. And listen up, if you stopped watching Formula One sometime in the last two years because you were sick and tired of watching Max Verstappen win every race, you're in luck because not only is the era of Max Verstappen dominance officially more dead and buried than the United States' representation in Formula One, but we also just cannot stop getting different F1 race winners right now. From the beginning of the 2022 season through April of this year's 2024 season, Red Bull driver Max Verstappen won 38 of the 49 total Grand Prix held for an insane winning percentage of around 78%. Truly an all-time great run of form for both Max and Red Bull Racing that was as respectable as it was yawn-inducing. <sighs> However, there have been nine races held since that run of Max's, and not only is Max's winning percentage across those nine races a mere 33% as he only won three of them, but the remaining six races were remarkably won by five different drivers, all of whom were not named Max Verstappen. It's like the F1 gods are making up for the last two seasons by going full Oprah Winfrey with F1 drivers and wins right now saying, you get a win, you get a win, you get a win. To put that crazy win spread in perspective, during Max's aforementioned streak of winning 38 out of 49 Grand Prix, there were only five different race winners total, one of whom was named Max Verstappen and we've already topped that different winner total in just the past nine races alone. If you're wondering why F1 is so competitive right now, it's because we are nearing the end of the current F1 regulations era, which ends after next season, and generally speaking, the further into a regulations era you get, the more competitive F1 gets from top to bottom as chasing teams have more time and resources to develop their cars and catch up to the team in front. That is, unless you're the 2021 Haas team. For a clear past example of this, you need look no further back than the insanely entertaining and dramatic 2021 season, which ended up being as dramatic and entertaining as it was because 2021 was the last year of that regulations era, which gave Red Bull Racing just enough time to catch up to and surpass the Mercedes team that dominated every other year of that regulations era. Well, Red Bull surpassed Mercedes, depending on who you ask. I asked Michael Mossy. This F1 season and the next one that will cap off this regulations era are both shaping up to be all-timers, so make sure you toss me a subscription so that you can keep up with all the F1 insanity as it unfolds. I am constantly creating F1 content on YouTube as well as on all social media platforms at Formula Bone, and I would love to have you along for the ride if you care to join me. Summer is seersucker suit season. Try saying that five times fast. And whether you want to go seersucker like me this summer or you want a different style of summer suit, visit Indochino.com and use code FBONE to get 10% off any purchase of $399 or more. Indochino is your style partner for made-to-measure, totally customizable men's and women's wear for wedding season and beyond. I always feel great wearing Indochino's garments to weddings and other events because they fit me just right as they were literally custom-made using my exact body measurements. How? You set up your measurement profile with Indochino in less than 10 minutes by measuring yourself from the comfort of your own home or making an appointment at one of their showrooms. I went into a showroom and it was a super enjoyable and quick experience. You then place your suit order, including any special customizations to buttons, pockets, and more, and they do the rest. You then get a custom suit delivered right to your door. Again, I love their seersucker suit options, but if you want any style of high quality bespoke suit at an affordable price you cannot beat, hit up Indochino. Customize your summer style with Indochino. Go to Indochino.com and use code FBONE to get 10% off any purchase of $399 or more. That's 10% off at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com with code FBONE. Next up, how wildly entertaining the 2024 F1 season has been and will almost certainly continue to be raises a very interesting question. Is it possible for the 2024 Formula One season to end up being more entertaining than the insane 2021 F1 season? The 2021 F1 season had one of the most exciting, dramatic, and controversial finishes in the history of Formula One. 
This is because the World Constructors Championship kept swinging back and forth between Mercedes and Red Bull, eventually coming down to the final race of the season, and more famously, the World Drivers Championship kept swinging back and forth between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, culminating in them entering the final race of the season tied on points before, well, uh, you know the story. And if you don't, consider yourself lucky. Along with its insane drivers and constructors championship battles, the 2021 season also featured six different race winners and a few unforgettable races in Ocon's maiden win at the Hungarian Grand Prix, McLaren's Monza 1-2, and the magical Azerbaijan Grand Prix. See what I did there? That sure is a tough act to try and match, but honestly, the 2024 F1 season that we are in the middle of could do it if the second half of this season stays on the chaotic path that the first half has gone down. We're only halfway through the 2024 F1 season, and it already has more unique race winners than the entire 2021 season did as well, as some truly unforgettable races in Lando's maiden victory, Lewis's British Grand Prix win, and Leclerc's home Monaco win. And not only all that, but the 2024 Constructors' Championship battle is shaping up to be more entertaining than 2021's given the number of different teams still in legit contention. I'll talk more about the 2024 Constructors' Championship here in a second, but just know it's looking like we are going to end up with at least a two-team fight for the World Constructors' Championship in 2024, and maybe even a three-team or a four-team one. And while it's a bit less likely, it is definitely still possible that we get a World Drivers' Championship battle to match that World Constructors' Championship one. At the risk of jinxing it, I dare say that the 2024 season very well may end up being more entertaining than the 2021 F1 season, and hopefully, for all of our sake, far less controversial. Next, you need to be following Formula One right now because both the World Constructors and Drivers' Championships are closer than they have been in years. After back-to-back -back runaway championships for Max Verstappen and Red Bull that both happened so early in the season it should be illegal, we finally have legitimate championship battles in not just one, but both championships. Okay, one more than the other, but still. First, let's take a look at how the Formula One World Constructors Championship standings look with about half of the F1 season remaining, and oh my goodness, are they looking amazing. In P1, you have Red Bull Racing with 408 points, and in P2, you have McLaren with 366 points. That is a point difference of just 42 points, and with 44 points up for grabs at a normal race weekend, yes, that means that McLaren could be leading the World Constructors Championship as early as after the next race. Unreal. In P3, you have Ferrari just 21 points behind McLaren. They really wish they could have that Canada double DNF back, huh? And in P4, you have the surging Mercedes who have 266 points after winning three of the last four Grand Prix. And they'd have even more points if Toto Wolff spent less time FaceTiming loaves of pumpernickel bread and more time focusing on his car's weight. Get a load of this. Just four races separate Red Bull in P1 from Mercedes in P4 right now. And to put that in perspective, through the same amount of race weekends last season, eight races separated Red Bull in P1 from Mercedes in P2. Yes, you heard that right. And yes, last season kind of stunk, huh? While the top four teams are all close enough to where we could legit have a four-way Constructors' Championship battle come the end of the season, there's a steep drop-off to the midfield battle between Aston Martin in P5 with 73 points, RB in P6 with 34 points, and Haas in P7 with 27 points. Hey, I would not count Haas out of finishing the season P5 if they can continue working that Nico Hulkenberg P6 magic. Then there's the battle for not last, which is super tight between Alpine and P8 with 11 points, Williams in P9 with four points, and current last place frontrunner Sauber with zero points. Sauber are looking to be on the come up a little bit right now, which is hard to not do when you have zero points. But do you, yes you, think that'll be enough for them to finish the season with at least one point let me know in the comments. Go comment right now. Next up, naturally, let's take a look at how the Formula One World Drivers Championship standings look with about half of the F1 season remaining. In first place, you of course have three-time reigning F1 World Drivers Champion Max Verstappen with 277 points. <coughs> Sorry, I'm allergic to Max. In second place, you have Lando Norris with 199 points. That makes the difference between first and second place right now, 78 points. And with 26 points being the maximum up for grabs at a normal Grand Prix weekend, it means the earliest that Lando could match Max's point total is exactly three races from right now. Using the most recent three races as a jumping off point, Lando Norris has outscored Max in those three races by just three points, meaning he'd need carry the one 26 Grand Prix to catch up to Max. 
However, fortunately for Lando and for all of us, that is not how F1 works. All it will take for this season to go from mild to extra spicy are some scoreless DNF weekends for Max Verstappen, you know, like the DNF he caused Lando to have in Austria, which is entirely possible and I am openly rooting for because I live for the chaos. By the way, through the same amount of Grand Prix weekends last season, Max's lead over P2 was 145 points instead of 78, or almost twice as large, which just goes to show how much more competitive this season is than last, and hopefully is a sign of what we all hope will be an even closer 2025 season. Third place through sixth place is absolute scenes as only 27 points or just one point over one race separates Leclerc in P3 from Piastri in P4 from Sainz in P5 from Lewis in P6, with all four of them having race wins this season and thus being capable of huge points hauls. I expect a lot of jumbling up of P3 through P6 for the remainder of the season, and it's going to be awesome. Seventh place belongs to the out-of-form Checo Perez, who I expect to get passed up by George Russell in eighth place within the next couple of races if Checo does not complete his long overdue turnaround here soon. Something wild to note is that right now, Checo in P8 is 146 points behind Max Verstappen in P1, and through the same amount of races last season, Checo was only one point closer to Max in P1, despite Checo being P2. Man, last season really kind of blew, huh? A distant ninth place belongs to Fernando Alonso, who's certainly not having the season he hoped he would, given how he finished last season P4 in the Drivers' Championship, and how he's barely ahead of his teammate Lance Stroll in P10, and that's Lance Stroll. You then have one of the surprises of the season, Nico Hulkenberg in P11, with the tiebreaker over Yuki Tsunoda in P12. Personally, I think the tiebreaker should go to the driver who scores their driver number, which would be number 22 Yuki here, but alas, I don't make the rules. Just behind Yuki in P13 is the guy fighting him for a Red Bull seat, Danny Ricardo. P14 is hilariously Ollie Behrman, who, yes, only competed in one race this season, but is still ahead of six drivers who have competed in every race, and one driver who competed in every race but one. Yeah, yeah, I also forgot about that whole fiasco till right now. They took his car away. P15 is Gasly. P16, K-Mag, who might get a race ban before he leaves F1 due to all the penalty points he's racked up. P17 is Ocon. P18, Albon. P19, Joe. P20, Sergeant. Hashtag not last. And in last, you have Valtteri Bottas, which is crazy considering he's finished P2 in the World Drivers' Championship twice. That Sauber car must be truly terrible. Finally today, back in January, I made five individual 2024 F1 season predictions, and I think now, in the heart of the F1 summer break, is the perfect time to check in on those and see how they're doing. But before we get to that, let me tell you about my sponsor, Shopify. Shopify is the best all-in-one commerce platform capable of handling your business's complexity no matter how big you grow. Step up to Shopify and harness the best converting checkout and the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands like Ruggable and Allbirds. Why spend time trying to build an online store with someone besides Shopify when Shopify stores convert the best? That's a wild thing to do. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be using Shopify. One thing I love about Shopify is that it integrates with YouTube, which just goes to show that Shopify is very forward thinking when it comes to selling products in the modern digital age. Stop leaving sales on the table, switch your business to Shopify and discover why millions trust Shopify as their all-in-one commerce platform to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash fbone, all lowercase, very important. That's one month for just $1 at shopify.com slash fbone, shopify.com slash fbone. Now, here's how the 2024 Formula One season predictions that I made back in January are looking through the first half of the F1 season. My first prediction was that Max Verstappen and Red Bull would dominate F1 once again and be crowned 2024's World Drivers and Constructors Champions, respectively. Back when we were just five races into the season, I was pretty much 100% sure that this prediction was going to come true, as Max Verstappen won four of those five races and Checo logged four podium finishes across them. But then, some crazy things started happening, namely the resurgences of McLaren and Mercedes and the great Checo collapse of 2024, not to be confused with the great Checo collapse of 2023. Max and Red Bull's once commanding championship leads have now been cut into deep enough to the point where Lando Norris could catch up to Max in the Drivers' Championship in three races, and McLaren could catch up to Red Bull as early as the next race, the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. It's still Max and Red Bull's championships to lose, but... 
While I do think Max still ends up 2024 as World Drivers Champion, I am no longer convinced that Red Bull will be finishing as the season's top team, especially given their renewed commitment to Checo, the guy who's pretty much single-handedly gotten them into this situation in the first place. My second prediction was that Fernando Alonso would retire from Formula One after this season. Now, this one's definitely not looking likely, considering back in April, Alonso, you know, signed a contract extension with Aston Martin through 2026. But you never know, folks. I mean, Alonso only has three points finishes in his last eight races, which surely is well below what he was hoping for this season. And if Alonso believes that the Aston Martin project will not yield a championship caliber car in the next few years, he may decide to duck out before next season so that he can spend the remainder of his 40s in peace. The dude is 43 years old after all. However, if the rumors are true and Aston Martin are to sign the GOAT car designer Adrian Newey after he departs Red Bull, you gotta think there's no shot Alonso retires without letting Newey cook for him. My third prediction was that 2024 would be Checo Perez's last Formula One season driving for Red Bull. Unlike with my Alonso prediction, the fact that Checo signed a contract extension with Red Bull earlier this year does not have me worried that this prediction won't come true. I think everyone on earth knows that there is pretty much no shot Checo will be a Red Bull driver after this season, given his poor form, even though Red Bull have announced that they'll be sticking with him for the remainder of the season. One of the prevailing theories right now is that Red Bull wanted to part ways with Checo to stop the bleeding in their World Constructors Championship battle with McLaren, but that Liberty Media, who own F1, pretty much forced Red Bull's hand and made them keep Checo because they feared that if Checo was dropped, attendance at his home race, October's Mexico City Grand Prix, would plummet. Makes you think. Regardless, I feel very confident that this prediction is going to come true. My fourth prediction was that the Chinese Grand Prix would finally be held after being canceled four years in a row, and ding ding, J-Bone already got that one right. J-Bone! Man, it feels pretty good to have already banked one correct prediction, even if it was a pretty easy one. What was that? My fifth and final prediction was that Lewis Hamilton would win a race this season. Ding ding, ding, ding J-Bone also, also got, got that, that one, one right already. already. J-Bone! J-Bone. Honestly, it is looking like I still have a decent shot at going five for five with my preseason predictions, which is pretty cool. My fate now lies mostly in the hands of Fernando Alonso and, far more scarily, Checo Perez. Special shout out to my top YouTube channel members, Joe Max's number one hitter Snow, Brian Linton, Wolfsville's Racing, Wavalopagus, and David Haig. Mash that join button just below this video to get your name shouted out right here in future videos. Toss me a subscription so you can see me back here for my next piece of F1 Summer Break content. And until next time, folks, J-Bomb! J-Bomb!